Hey, I'm Stephanie, and it's time to talk about new makeup releases. I'll be doing my best to keep my makeup monster in check because, to tell the truth, I'm tempted by a lot of these. Maybe it's because they're spring releases, and as someone who shoveled snow for five and a half hours yesterday, I think I might be ready for spring. I'm continuing on my Adagio beauty journey this year, meaning that I am deliberately trying to keep the pace of my purchasing slow so that I have time to truly enjoy any new thing I might choose to purchase while of course still having time to enjoy the beautiful things I already have. Seeing all the tempting makeup releases on social media and from various creators, all of whom will be linked below, can sometimes make it hard for me to resist the temptation to over purchase things because the makeup monster in me wants to try everything. But time has taught me that although I really genuinely want to try everything, I don't actually want to own everything. So I'm going to try to keep that distinction in mind as we dive in and try to tame the beast within. Let's start with something easy that I saw on Trend Mood 1. If you see me looking over here, that's just because where I have all the pictures of things. So Natasha Denona released her mini My Dream collection, which is like the small version of her My Dream collection. And these look lovely. I'm sure they are lovely in real life, but I don't think I'll be picking these up because I have discovered one thing that really irks me about her mini palettes, and that is that the pans are not removable. I've gotten so used to mixing and matching the shadows from her larger palettes that I've started to become really frustrated that I can't do it with the minis. The color story of this one is beautiful. It's slightly cool toned. I like the balance between mattes and shimmers, and I really like that shade in the middle that looks like a could be a little bit spicy. This is precisely the type of color story that I would just love to mix and match with other shadows. And this is exactly what I have found every single time I have reached for one of the minis that I already do own. And that is that I wish I could take this one shade and pair it with these other things from other palettes. And because I always feel that frustration every time I reach for the ones I have, I actually decided a while back, I think it was sometime at the beginning of last year, that I just was not going to purchase any more of the mini palettes precisely for that reason. And because I've already told myself that, I have a very simple framework for an easy no. So I will be passing on this one, even though I really do like the color story. And based on my experience with Natasha Denona shadows, I would probably really enjoy the quality. I really like the blush too. Those are precisely the colors I reach for all the time. And and I am very curious about Natasha's cheek formula because I've never tried any of her cheek products before. But I have long had my eye on the large My Dream collection ever since it came out, I don't know, what, a year ago, a year and a half ago? So I think if I were to pick up one of those two blush palettes, it would be the larger one because that format seems more up my alley. It has a cream blush, a cream highlighter, and a powder highlighter, if I'm remembering correctly. And I just like that format better. So that makes it easier for me to say no to this really pretty mini palette. To be honest, I've had my eye on the entire My Dream collection ever since it came out, especially that eyeshadow palette, but I've just been exercising self-control and haven't gotten around to purchasing yet. Who knows? I may never get around to purchasing it. <laughs> I find the best way to beat my makeup monster is just to put off buying stuff. But back to cheeks, I think I did a pretty good job curating my cheek product collection last year in my Panning for Gold series, which I'll link in the show notes in case you want to follow that progress. But I feel like I haven't lived with that curated collection for long enough yet, because as you might be able to tell from the different background and the wonky lighting and the strange sound, I've been traveling and so I haven't had access to my collection since I finished curating it. So when I get back, I just really wanna revel in it for a while and I wanna play with all the blushes and bronzers and highlights and just see if I might even need to narrow it down even more. Because even though I removed a lot of the similar products and a lot of the semi-dupes, I'm not sure I need all of the colors that I still have. So I wanna spend time playing with that and I don't wanna add anything at this point. And for those reasons, it's pretty easy for me to say no to this mini cheek palette even though it does look quite sweet. Next up, I see that Shantakai is coming out with a 
sea turtle collection. It looks like they're coming out with two color stories. One is warm, one is cool, and each color story has eyeshadows and lip cheeks. Both of the color stories appeal to me, and I have to say, I have had an exquisite experience with every Shantikai product that I have ever tried. But although I have tried several at this point, I've only ever actually purchased one and owned one for myself, and that was a lip chic that I purchased years ago. And I did really enjoy that formula, and I actually still have it. <laughs> I still enjoy it. So I'm sure that these new lip cheeks are lovely, especially that plum nude shade looks very nice but I'm just not really in the market for a new lipstick at the moment so as comfortable and easy to wear and pretty as these are I won't be picking one of those up the eyeshadows in both color stories look very basic and a little washed out in these pictures in other words they're right up my alley because as much as I adore playing with eyeshadow, that's obviously the category that is the one that's most likely to trip me up. My favorite colors are always the most boring ones and these fit the bill perfectly. But I don't think I've ever tried this formula. The only ones that I've had the opportunity to play with were the luminescent eyeshades, which are gorgeous. I will link my review of them below, but I think this formula is different. It looks like it might possibly be similar to the formula they released last spring. And I think they did like a quad of four little eyeshadows and I never had the chance to try that one, but I did watch a lot of reviews and based on those, that palette seemed kind of like a flop. So I'm gonna use that info to ease any temptation I might be feeling. I'm gonna let it inform my decision to say no to these because I'm just gonna assume they're the same formula that no one liked from last year. Of course, that's just an assumption. I have no idea <laughs> if the formula is the same. And of course, if you have tried them, feel free to let me know your thoughts. Scrolling further, I see that Prada is coming to Sephora on January 15th. So at the time of filming, it's not online yet, but it will probably be by the time this video goes live. That's exciting. I'm actually really interested in every single thing that Prada Beauty has released so far. So I think it's great that they'll be accessible to a wider audience, AKA me. <laughs> <laughs> Sephora will be getting the monochrome hyper matte refillable lipsticks, the monochrome soft matte refillable lipsticks, the Dimensions multi-effect refillable eyeshadow palettes, the Reveal Skin optimizing refillable soft matte foundations, and the moisturizing lip balm. I think that's everything from the line. And that's cool <laughs> because that's all the stuff I'm interested in. Considering the fact that I will probably be in the market for a new foundation this year since I haven't bought one in years now and I think the few that I have left will either get used up or expire this year, this is one that I have been considering trying. Heaven knows I definitely don't need any more eyeshadows so I probably shouldn't get any of those but it doesn't stop me from wanting one. Same with the lipsticks. I don't need any new lipstick right now, but I am so curious about these. Have you tried them? Are they comfortable to wear? Because they're matte lipsticks and that doesn't necessarily mean comfort. I'm still so scarred by the matte lipsticks of the early 2010s that I still always ask myself that question about matte lipsticks. So I won't be purchasing anything from this line anytime soon, but I will be keeping my eye on Prada. Same with Chanel. They recently released the Chanel Le Beige Winter Glow Collection, which looks absolutely lovely. And I have to say, as a beige babe myself, the name Le Beige just is very alluring to me. I'm personally not interested in glowy primers as someone with oily skin and I have horribly weak nails so I'm never interested in nail polish. So those are an easy pass for me. But the blushes and the lippies look yummy and surprise, surprise, the eyeshadow is what's catching my eye the most. They have a whole series of these eyeshadow palettes on the market now in several colorways. I think this new one is called Cool. 
and I think it looks gorgeous. But if I could choose one of them from their lineup to try, I'm not entirely sure this would be the colorway for me. I'm definitely sure I could make this work. I'm definitely sure I would have fun with it, but I think that their warm or medium palette in this same format might be more up my alley color-wise. To be honest, the compact of these eyeshadows just really gets me. I'm a sucker for beige, what can I say? That packaging just has something that sparks my interest. I think it's so attractive. I don't wanna be like this. I don't wanna be the person who's obsessed with packaging, but I am, so I have to accept it. My makeup monster drools over these palettes every time she sees them. Luckily, my makeup monster is just a figment of my imagination, so there's no actual drool involved, but, I am just gonna continue exercising the same muscles of self-control that I have been training for the past couple of years. And I'm just gonna allow myself to want these gorgeous things for whatever silly reasons I want them. And I'm just not gonna follow through on that desire. And I'm just not going to acquire them. And if I still genuinely crave one of these quints a year from now, I can revisit that desire then. I have since clicked through to Chic Profile 4, where I see that Suku is coming out with a spring 2024 collection, consisting of, it looks like, two eyeshadow palettes, a handful of liquid eyeshadows, some moisture lippies, and some nail polish. The Signature Color Eyes palette in 134 is the first eyeshadow palette from Suku that has really awoken my makeup monster because sometimes I feel like Suku's color combinations are a little bit weird for me. I'm sure they're great because I hear rave reviews about them, but I don't know, sometimes the combinations just look a little bit not intuitive to me, but these, both of these look great because 135, that looks gorgeous as well. But my makeup monster is insane, so she wants both. You know, but she's not the one who has to pay 80 bucks a pop for these palettes, so she doesn't get a say. That being said, these are going to be really hard for me to resist. I think I have to <laughs> because I already have these colors, but my makeup monster keeps whispering, yeah, but you haven't tried these formulas, and what if they're the best thing ever, and they're better than all your other eyeshadows? Because I've heard so many good things about Suku. Same with the liquid eyeshadows. I think they're called liquid luster eyes. Those look gorgeous, but they're liquids, and I have learned to drastically rein myself in when it comes to liquid and cream cosmetics, just because those products tend to go off so much faster than powders. And if I have too many of those things in my collection at once, they're just going to expire before I have time to enjoy them. And especially with these types of shadows, these aren't the sort of thing that I can disinfect and then give to a friend. So it's just a shame if they don't get used. So I just really shouldn't be purchasing products like this because I currently have enough liquid eyeshadows, but that's not stopping me from admiring these. The formula looks so thin, it almost looks like it creates a veil over the eyes. It's really fine and ethereal. So these are really singing me a siren song. The way the blushes are described is also pretty delectable. I think they're called the pure color blushes. They are, and I quote, two limited edition blushes that give you a translucent, three-dimensional look and a complexion that seems to bleed from the inside of your cheeks. Okay, well, maybe that part doesn't sound all that delectable, but I think I know what they meant. And I'm not sure the person who wrote this is a native speaker of English, so I'm gonna give them some leeway there. I want this, the whole release, except for maybe the moisture glaze lipsticks. Not because the formula looks bad, but because none of these colors appeal to me that much. The one that looks closest to something that I'd wear is shade one, but that one looks like it might pull a bit too orange on me. And that orange color has temporarily broken the trance in which Suku had me. So let's move on while I'm distracted. Then I won't go and impulsively order anything. Moving on to the Dior Backstage Smoky Essentials palette. Ooh. I have always wanted to try the Dior Backstage line and the format of those eyeshadow palettes has always felt like it would be really useful to me as someone who travels a lot. 
I've just never purchased one because none of the color stories ever really spoke to me 100%. But this, this is the first color story in the line that has just really spoken to me. But I bought the Huda Beauty Pretty Grunge palette last year and these colors, although this doesn't look like it's a dupe for that palette, these colors just feel really similar. So as tempted as I am by this, I think when I get home, I'm just gonna try to reach for my Huda Beauty palette whenever I'm tempted to buy this and maybe I can satiate that urge. I've moved on to yet another Instagram account, Makeup On Your Radar, and I see that Tarte is coming out with a Maracuja Juicy Eye and Cheek Palette consisting of 12 powder eyeshadows, three cream cheek products, all in shades of beige and pink. So <laughs> right up my alley. Here's a release that reminds me of spring, which is much needed since it's already snowing here, again. <laughs> Being the beige babe who recently discovered pink, this does appeal to me, but not enough for me to wanna go and purchase it, so I'm not really tempted. And there's two reasons. One, it reminds me of the Glam face palette from Natasha Denona. And if I really wanted to buy an eye and cheek palette, which I could at some point, I would choose that one. Because of, reason number two, the eyeshadow quality. I decluttered two Tarte eyeshadow palettes last year, the Tartlet in Bloom and the Tartlet Juicy eyeshadow palettes. The quality of the Tartlet in Bloom palette was actually pretty nice, but other better neutrals have since entered my collection. So I chose to give my Tartlet in Bloom palette away while there was still some life in it because it really is a nice palette. The quality of the Juicy palette, however, really wasn't nearly as good. I found the shadows to be a bit patchy and hard to blend, and that's what I would be afraid of in this Maracuja Juicy Eye and Cheek palette because this also seems to be part of Tarte's Juicy line and has similar colors, so I'd be afraid that the quality is also lacking. So as much as the color story appeals to me and as curious as I am about those cream cheek products, this one is a very easy pass for me. But Tarte isn't done yet because apparently they're coming out with a new Maracuja Juicy Lift Liner, which apparently has a uniquely angled tip that effortlessly lines, shapes, plumps, and lifts your lips. But anyone who has ever used a lip liner knows that those tips wear down pretty fast. So the fact that they're riding hard on the shape of the liner doesn't give me all that much confidence in the liner itself. Although it does come with like a special sharpener from based on this picture, I don't know how that would work, but if it does work, maybe that would be cool. These also supposedly have hiya, lironic acid for a plumping effect, but that ingredient is not always as hydrating as I hope it will be. Case in point, the Laneige sleeping mask, those have hyaluronic acid in them, but they dry out my lips if I don't top them with something more occlusive. So hyaluronic acid isn't necessarily a guarantee for plumping hydration, but these liners also have a nourishing maracuja and super fruit complex that's supposed to smooth the look of lip lines. That sounds really good on paper, but uh, first of all, I don't really know what a super fruit is. But second of all, I find that skincare ingredients, they often do make my skin look good to a point, but blurring ingredients like certain silicones tend to do more to smooth lines, at least in real time when I'm looking for an immediate effect. So I'm also not so sure about the super fruit thing. So these don't have any claims or colors that intrigue me enough to wanna go run out and try them right now, especially because I definitely own enough lip liners. I love a good lip liner, but I find I only really need a few core shades. And when I have those few core shades, I can pretty much make those work with any lipstick I own. So this one's gonna be a no for me too. And it looks like Huda Beauty is coming out with a new Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder, but it's just a new color in peach pie for medium to tan with warm undertones. And they describe the product as, quote, a lightly pigmented silky setting powder that bakes and sets, blurs the look of fine lines and locks in makeup for 10 hours with an airbrushed finish. 
I have used this product, if not this color. In fact, if memory serves, I pre-recorded a review of comparisons of different powders, um, and this powder was included in that review. But my schedule was insane in December, and I also got hit in the head pretty hard, so I'm not sure if I just dreamed I recorded it, but if I did, and I managed to finish editing that, then I will try to remember to link it below, because this powder, is really nice. The claims of blurring fine lines and locking in makeup are based in reality, at least in my experience. I think saying that it has an airbrushed finish might be taking it a little bit far because let's face it, if a product actually made the skin look airbrushed, that would be revolutionary. Literally everyone would be using that. But I have to say it definitely goes in that direction. So I do think it's a fair claim and I really did enjoy using this product during testing. So despite the fact that this new shade isn't really relevant to me personally, I am always happy to see shade ranges expand when the quality of a product is this good, even if it is just one shade. Ooh, Clay de Poe is releasing new eyeshadow singles in six shades. Just like the new eyeshadow quads that released last year, which I haven't tried yet, these intrigue me because it's a formula I've never played with. And my makeup monster demands that I try every single colored dirt out there. But that's just it. This is fancy colored dirt. And it's clay de peau, which means it's probably super expensive colored dirt. And none of these colors are original to my collection. So as beautiful as they look, and as much as my makeup monster is screaming for me to try this new formula, I don't think I'll be picking up any of these expensive little dirt pods. This next release is pretty striking. It is the Spring Summer 2024 collection from Hermes. Yes, I said Hermes because, I don't know, I feel like when I say MS, it's just <laughs> a little too serious. And if I take makeup too seriously, I will let my makeup monster take over. So Hermes just makes it easier for me to look the other way. But I mean, these colors and the way they emphasize the geometry of the components, it's just stunning. My personal favorite is that pink lipstick, which looks like it would be maybe 41 rose pop. Are we surprised that I picked the most conventional color combination? No. We are not. <laughs> as attractive as this packaging is, I think that the colors are a little bit too bold for my personal makeup taste at the moment. And I don't think that's just because we're currently in the dead of winter and I just feel like hibernating for the next three months. Uh, these colors are just not things that I would realistically wear. Next up is a release from Bella Beauté Bar and it is the Dead Roses palette. The only info I have right now is the cover because they haven't released the insides as of the time of filming. But to be honest, the title piques my interest. That could go in so many cool grungy directions. And it's a formula I've never tried, which also of course puts my makeup monster in a tizzy. I haven't tried many indie eyeshadows. I think that has more to do with my travel schedule than anything else because, you know, indie companies are small and they tend to have long lead times. So a lot of times I don't want to risk ordering something because I'm not sure if I'll actually be able to get the package when it finally arrives. But also a lot of times the releases sell out really quickly. And if I'm on the road, then usually by the time I get around to looking at the website, everything's already sold out anyway. So I've just never really logistically been able to get into indie eyeshadows. But when I went in search of more swatches and colors from this brand, they certainly looked very beautiful. So I'll be interested to see what they do with the Dead Roses theme because Valentine's Day is a very Dead Roses kind of holiday for me anyway. My question is, have you tried Bella Beauté bar? Is, are they good? I mean, I, the name sounds familiar to me, but I don't think I've heard that many people talk about them. Moving on, it looks like One Size Beauty is coming out with the Secure the Glow Primer, which apparently has been nicknamed the hashtag Boba Primer because of the little glops of goo suspended in the liquid. Firstly, I don't know who had the brilliant idea of nicknaming it a Boba Primer, but it was genius because it immediately removed my thoughts from the realm of failed and dangerous biology experiment to 
boba tea. And anyone who knows me knows that boba tea is one of my most favorite goodies on the entire planet. I try never to be too far from a good cup of boba. Case in point, I have a feeling editing Stephanie will be enjoying some boba too. Editing Stephanie here to confirm, there is boba. Now, last year I started setting myself an overarching beauty goal. And I did that because I wanted to focus more on honing my skills using what I already have instead of always chasing the next thing out there to try to solve my beauty problems. And that worked so well that I chose an overarching beauty goal for this year as well. And so this year, I really wanna focus on mastering my complexion. I wanna make my skin look as favorably as it can on any given day. And and the idea of taking my love of boba to the next level by smearing it all over my face does make me happier than it should. But in light of my goal and trying to learn how to use what I have to the best possible degree before going out and purchasing something, makes me think I'm not going to get this. But there's a couple of reasons why. One is I have tried a whole bunch of face primers in my life and none of them has ever really made a difference that was big enough to be worth the effort or the price. So I really don't think I'll be trying this one, especially because I don't have a problem with glow. As an oily combination complexion, I kind of tend to glow too much. <laughs> so I would be more interested in securing the blur, which is also a primer from one size, one that I would actually love to try. But I think I'm gonna focus on honing my skills using what I already have for now. And once I feel like I have gotten far enough with that, I've exhausted my possibilities, then I might be more open to trying a primer. Unfortunately, just not the boba primer. It looks like Estee Lauder is coming out with Pure Color Explicit Slick Shine Lipsticks. They're explicit, explicitly slick. Explicit slick shine lipsticks. If that isn't a tongue twister, I don't know what is. I feel like Estee Lauder's a little bit late to the game. I feel like most brands have their high intensity shine lipsticks in sleek bullet form and they've been on the market for a while now. My personal favorite version of this product is the Gucci Glow and Care Shine lipsticks, I think they're called. I have mine in the shades Sally Soft Honey and Lynette Stone. To be fair, that's, I think, one of the only formulas of this type of lipstick that I've ever tried, but Gucci's colors are so nuanced and the formula is so comfortable and the packaging is so nice. I just haven't been tempted to buy another brand's version of what I already own and love. But if I were in the market for a lipstick like this, I'm not sure these would be the ones I'd wanna try, at least not based on the description of eight hour wear that won't fade. Don't get me wrong, I think it's great when lipsticks wear well and don't fade, especially for eight hours, but I'm just not sure how a glossy formula like this could achieve that without also doing something like staining the lips. Because the nature of glossy formulas is usually relatively fleeting. So I feel like they would have to have a staining element to get that eight hour wear. And I, I just don't like lip stains. Keep in mind, I am just speculating. The description doesn't say anything about these being a stain. In fact, let's read the claims. Number one, eight hour wear. Sounds great to me, as long as it's not a stain. Two, supremely comfortable, sensuously smooth and creamy. Supremely comfortable, I want that. Three, fearless and true color, won't fade, feather, or flinch. Is that why my lipsticks have been fading all these years? <laughs> Stage fright? I had no idea they were so sensitive. But apparently Estee Lauder slick shine lipsticks don't have that problem because they're fearless. <laughs> Claim number four, instantly drenches lips with plumping, conditioning moisture. I want that. Claim five, sculpts and defines with dangerously slick shine. As a person who slipped on ice just this morning, I don't want dangerously slick anything. And if my lips are dangerously slick, what does that imply? If I kiss someone, are we going to get hurt? I'm not sure the marketing department thought this claim entirely through. Claim number six, precise application creates your most provocative looks. Okay, I guess, but if we rephrase this claim, 
It does feel kind of absurd. Use the thin bullet to color inside the lines because that's sexy. Does anyone else think these claims are a little weird? Seven, audaciously sleek silhouette. I assume they're not referring to my lips with sleek. I assume they're referring to the component. Do they know what audacious means? Do I know what audacious means? I think it means to demonstrate a willingness to take surprisingly bold risks or show an impudent lack of respect. These components, they're alluring, they're classic, they're captivating looking, but I wouldn't call that design bold or risky or impudent. So sleek, yes, but audacious, not so much. Eight, signature fluting with a glam rose-colored tint. In other words, very Charlotte Tilbury. I'm not dissing that. In fact, I do actually find the packaging quite appealing, but it's not really that original. In fact, I feel like this whole marketing thing is kind of forcing some sort of weird sensuality. It's like trying to capitalize on the whole pillow talk and orgasm things from Charlotte Tilbury and NARS. And that makes it easy for me to say no, especially since I already own really great glossy lippies in classically beautiful packaging. But maybe this product is absolutely ravishing in real life. If you've tried it, feel free to let me know what your experience was, because if it truly is dangerously slick, I kind of want to know what that means. Now, what's this I see about ColourPop collaborating with Twilight? I don't have all that much of a relationship with ColourPop. The few eyeshadows that I tried were nice, but I've never even tried one of their famous Super Shock shadows before, so I don't know much about ColourPop at all. But I do have kind of a weird and twisted relationship with Twilight. I don't know what it is, but every single time I'm on the road for too long and I start missing my loved ones, I get this irresistible urge to binge watch the Twilight movies on repeat. Why? I honestly can't tell you because my family is nothing like the Cullens, so it's not like they remind me of them. All I know is it's a thing. And as someone who has seen the first Twilight movie more times than I care to admit, I do think that ColourPop hit the nail on the head with the color story here because it very much reminds me of the outfits and costumes and the film's color grading. The first thing that caught my eye in this collection was actually the Team Jacob lip oil. Not because I'm Team Jacob. I'm not. I'm also not Team Edward. I'm not Team anyone really. I'm Switzerland. I was just always kind of along for the ride. But. I have wanted a lip gloss in that kind of blackened brown color for a long time now, and this one would really scratch that itch. But I just can't bring myself to break my multiple year long stretch of not buying any lippies just yet. Also, I don't know if the ColourPop lip oils are any good. I've never tried them. Are they good? Mm -hmm. If you tried them, let me know, because I don't know, maybe it would be worth breaking my no lippy buy for this. I also really kind of like that black sparkly liner and the eyeshadow palette, even though I don't know that those colors would really suit me. For some reason though, I keep thinking, I can totally make that work. And I'm also inexplicably attracted to the body highlighter that could give me the skin of a killer, Bella. What is wrong with me? I suddenly want this entire collection. I've barely tried anything from ColourPop in my life, and the few things I tried, they were fine, but they weren't mind-blowingly good. But now I wanna go all in and get the whole thing. Does this mean I'm a Twilight girly? I'm a Twilight girly. <laughs> How did I not know this about myself? And why, now that I'm realizing it, do I feel <laughs> a sense of shame at admitting it? I don't know. They say embracing one's true self is the path to authenticity and fulfillment, so I guess I need to embrace this. <sighs> I am a Twilight girly. <laughs> and now I get what people mean when they say their, their YouTube channel feels like a form of therapy. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm gonna have to like go out in the yard and just start screaming this until the neighbors call the police. I feel like I need to process this now, so maybe it's a good time to end the video, but not before I thank you for hanging out with me. And if you're still here, wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's awesome. Leave a vampire in the comments so that I know I'm not just speaking insanity into the void. If you enjoyed this attempt at avoiding makeup temptation, I hope you'll like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. But even if you don't, I hope you have a great week and we can all remember that even stumbling can be a form of moving forward. So let's stumble in style. <laughs>